This is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka, and I welcome you to this session on RPA life cycle. So in this session, guys, we'll mainly focus on the different phases of the RPA life cycle. So without wasting any further time, let's take a look at the topics for today's session. So the topics that will be covered in this session are basically what is robotic process automation and what are the different phases of the RPA life cycle. So before I move on with the session, all of you who are looking forward to learn new technologies in today's market can get subscribed to the Edureka YouTube channels so that you can get daily updates on the various technologies. So now let's get started with the first topic for today's session. That is what is robotic process automation. Now robotic process automation is basically a process in which the robots mimic human actions to avoid any human intervention so that repetitive mundane tasks can be performed really easily. Now in the term robotic process automation, you mainly have to understand three terms that is robotic process and automation. So let's understand each of these terms one by one starting with robotic robotic are any entities which mimic human actions. So any entities which mimic human actions and perform a task are said to be robotic. Moving on to process process is basically a sequence of steps that lead to a meaningful activity. So whenever a robot has to perform a task, it follows a sequence of steps, right? So those sequence of steps are nothing but a process. And finally coming to the automation. So automation is any process that is done by a robot without any human intervention is basically automation. So that particular process is said to be automated. Now if we summarize all these terms together, that is robotic process and automation. It basically forms robotic process automation. So if you just have to understand robotic process automation guys, it's really simple. It's just a process done by the robots by mimicking human actions to reduce the human intervention is said to be robotic process automation. So that was about robotic process automation guys. So now that you know what exactly robotic process automation is, let's get into the main topic for today's session. That is RPA life cycle. So RPA life cycle has mainly five stages and an additional stage that is to execute the bot. So the starting stage is the discovery phase. Then we have the solution design phase. Then we have the development phase. Then the testing phase that is the user acceptance test. Then the deployment phase and finally the bots are executed. So guys, these are the various phases of RPA life cycle. Don't worry, we'll be discussing about each one of them in depth one by one. So let's start with the first phase that is the discovery phase. So the discovery phase is the phase basically where you know the requirements are analyzed. For example, let's take a scenario where we want to automate the task of you know extracting the data from a specific Excel file according to some condition and then the extracted data must be stored in another Excel file. So that is basically our client requirement. Now the client goes and gives this requirement to the process architect. So process architect is basically the person who interacts with the clients and asks for the requirements of the clients. So over here as I just mentioned before that we're going to consider a scenario of how to extract the data from an Excel file according to some condition and then store the extracted data into another Excel file. So now what happens in the discovery phase is that the first step is to analyze the client requirements. So the process architect sits with his team and analyzes the client requirements. Once the client requirements are analyzed, then the process architect decides whether the process can be automated or not. Let me tell you guys not every process can be automated. There are a few dependency issues, you know, where some processes can be automated and when some cannot be. Well, the scenario that I've considered definitely can be automated. So all the requirements for our use case are basically a system with a 16 GB RAM, basically a good memory system. Then we have a sample data set from which the data has to be extracted. After the sample data set, we have an output sheet where we're going to store the extracted data. And finally, we have a tool to automate the task. So basically, these are the requirements for our use case. So according to your task or maybe according to your client's requirement, you will have a specific set of requirements for specific tasks to be automated. Now, once all the requirements are analyzed, obviously there comes a scenario where you have to decide, you know, whether the process can be automated or not. So for example, let's consider if the process cannot be automated. Then the process architect just directly informs the client that you know the process cannot be automated and then obviously lists down the reason. But yes, if the process can be automated, then the next step is that you know the complexity is measured. So when I talk about complexity, I mean that basically all the dependency issues are checked and then all the network issues, RAM issues, dependency issues. Maybe you can understand by the fact that you know, if you automate a specific task, how much can the users use that task and so on, right? So that's how the complexity is measured. And finally, the benefits provided by the automation are also taken into account. So obviously when you're doing some action, you need results back. So that's what is measured at the last step of this particular phase. 
So benefits for our use case could be that, you know, less time will be required to read the data set. So for example, if you consider an employee sitting and reading each tuple of the sample data set and check the condition. So if the condition satisfies, he has to manually store all the data into the output data set. Now, obviously this would be time taking, right? So if you just automate this task then less time would be required, obviously no errors would be there in storing the data set. And finally, even if our sample data set gets updated automatically, our output sheet also gets updated. So that's how basically you can decide on what are the complexity and benefits of your automation. So if I have to just summarize discovery phase for you, then what happens is that the process architect communicates with the client and takes the requirements of the client. After that, the client's requirements are analyzed and then it is decided whether the process can be automated or not. Once if it is decided that the process can be automated, the complexity of the process is analyzed and also the benefits of the automation are taken into account. So guys, this was an end to the discovery phase. Now let's move forward with the next phase that is the solution design phase. So in the solution design phase, what happens is that the solution for your automation is designed. So the process architect sits down with the technical architect and both of them make the process definition document. Now the process definition document is a document which contains information about each and every step of the process in depth. So basically once the process definition document is designed, the next step that comes into picture is basically deciding the budget, the number of people working on the project, time to be spent on the project, what will be the production environment and so on. So all these requirements are basically analyzed and once this is also analyzed the next main step that comes into the picture in this particular step is the designing of the object model flowchart. So basically the object model flowchart represents the complete flow of the process. So anybody in the further steps developing the bot can refer to this particular diagram and then finally create the bot. Now the object model diagram for the use case that I considered would be as you can see on your screen. So we would start the project by mentioning the part of the spreadsheet from where we want to extract the data that is basically from the sample data set and then we would also mention the part of the spreadsheet where you wish to store the extracted data. After that we would mention this condition basically let's say you know if we have a sales column then if sales is greater than 2.5 lakhs then we want all the data from that particular row to be stored into our output data set. So that particular condition would be mentioned and after that we'll use a counter variable to basically initialize a loop such that you know for every time the condition is satisfied that particular row values would be stored into the output data set and then the counter increases by which I mean that you know the next row will be analyzed. After that the task would be saved and we will execute the bot. Now over here if the condition does not satisfy then the task ends then and there right so that's how you can basically design an object model flowchart guys. Now once the object model flowchart is designed the next step that you have to decide in this particular phase is the RPA tool on which you want to automate your task. Now there are enormous amount of tools in the RPA industry but the top three tools in the RPA market are UiPath, Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. So these three tools will basically help you cater your needs to your client requirements. So it's completely your call on which tool that you wish to choose. So if I have to summarize the solution design phase for you guys after the discovery phase where it is decided that you know the process will be automated. What happens is the first step that you have to do is basically create a process definition document wherein you mention all the information about the process step by step. After that what you have to do is you have to decide the other requirements like the budget the number of people and the time to be spent on the process. Once that is done you have to create an object model flowchart which basically shows the workflow of the project or basically you can understand that you know it shows the flow of the process for the automation to be developed and finally you have to choose an RPA tool upon which you'll automate your task. So that was about the solution design phase guys. Now let's move forward with our next phase that is the development phase. Now the development phase is the phase basically where you know the automation is developed. So the automation developer basically refers to the process definition document and starts creating the automation script or you can understand that you know the workflow of the automation. So that's how the automation developer comes into picture. So for our use case our automation script would be as you can see on my screen and I've chosen automation anywhere. So if you want to understand how to create this automation script for this particular use case you can refer to my session on automation anywhere examples where I've shown clearly step by step of how you can create this automation using different commands in automation anywhere. So I'm not going to go into depth of this automation script. You can refer to that particular video for understanding that but this is how guys the automation script looks. Basically you just have to create a workflow using the different activities or commands in the chosen RPA tool. So guys with this we come to an end of the development phase. 
So development phase was quite simple, guys. Basically, it is this phase where you know the automation is actually developed, or you can say the bot is developed. Now, once the bot is developed, the next phase that comes into picture is the UAT phase, that is the testing phase. So the testing is basically done by the process owner in the pre-production environment to check whether the developed bot is working or not. So basically, the bot is deployed to check how the users would use that bot and if there are any errors which still have to be rectified, right? So the UAT phase is quite simple, like in any other software testing lifecycle, or you can say the SDLC lifecycle. The testing phase, how we test a simple software, the same applies over here. The testing is done for the developed bot in the pre-production environment. So guys, that was about the UAT phase. Now let's move forward with the final phase, that is the deployment phase. Now the deployment phase is the phase where basically the bot is deployed into the production environment. So once the bot is developed and then it is tested into the pre-production environment and once it passes that test, the next phase that comes is basically the deployment phase. So basically the bot is deployed into the production environment and the users can use that bot. Now once the bot is deployed, the final phase or you can say the additional phase to this particular RPA lifecycle is executing the bot. So once the users have access to the bot, which is deployed into the production environment, the users can just run or execute the bots to generate meaningful results. So in our scenario, what I considered was this particular sample data set having n number of rows and columns. This was the output Excel sheet, which is basically a sample blank Excel sheet. Now the condition that I wanted to apply was on the sales column, which was present in the sample data set. So if the sales was greater than 2.5 lakhs, what I wanted was to store the data of that particular specific row into the output Excel sheet. So when I execute the bot, what happens is that first the sales column gets highlighted from where we want to extract the data. After that, all the values which have the value greater than 2.5 lakhs will be taken into account. So if you consider the sample data set that I chose over here, only one row has the value greater than 2.5 lakhs. So that particular row values would be stored into the output data set, right? So all the rows, all the values from units sold, manufacturing, sales price, gross sale, discounts, and sales will be stored one by one into the output data set. As you can see, that's happening. So guys, this was just a single row example that I showed you over here. You can take a complex data set and then you can create the same automation script and you'll understand that, you know, all the data is being stored into the Excel data set. So with this guys, we come to an end of the RPA life cycle. So if I have to just give you an overview of the complete RPA life cycle, then you basically start a project where you first analyze the requirements and check whether the process is eligible to be automated or not. If yes, then you move forward. If no, then you inform the client that you know the process cannot be automated. So if the process can be automated, then you measure the complexity of the project and then analyze the benefits of the automation. So until this, all the steps would be considered as a discovery phase. After that, you move forward with the solution design phase where you create a process definition document which will contain information about all the processes step by step, basically into depth. After that, you decide upon the budget, the number of people to be working on the project, and other factors such as time to be spent on the project. After that, you create an object model flowchart which basically shows the flow of the process and then finally choose an RPA tool upon which you wish to automate the task. So these steps will be considered as the solution design phase. After that, the life cycle moves on to the development phase where you develop an automation script referring to the process definition document and finally move to the testing phase where you test the developed automation or basically where you test a developed bot in the pre-production environment. Now, if there are any errors or maybe any additions that are found to be added, then the bot goes back to the development phase where the development team sits and works out to find the solution of the problem and again pushes the bot to the testing phase. And then once in the testing phase, if the bot is approved into the pre-production environment, it is then deployed into the production environment. That is basically a deployment phase. Now, even after deploying the bot into the production environment, if there are any errors found into the bot, then the bot goes back into the development and the testing phase. And again, the bot is deployed into the deployment phase. And finally, you execute the bots to generate meaningful results. That is to see the output. So guys, that's an end to the session. I hope you found this session informative. If you have any further queries, please comment down in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Until then, that's all from our side today. Thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.